In this video, we will be taking a look at how to add red devices to an XG firewall. Adding a red device to an XG firewall is pretty simple. It's three basic steps of enabling the red provisioning service on the firewall, creating a red interface for each red device I want to add, then finishing up with creating the necessary firewall access rules so the users in the remote office can have access to the network resources in my local network. Before we can begin to configure a red device in the firewall, we must first enable, or register if you will, the firewall to use the red provisioning service of Sophos. I'm going to click on System Services in the Configure section of the left-hand navigation bar, and then click on Red tab from the options across the top. Click on the slider button to turn the red service on. Fill in an organization name, city, country, and email address. Make sure it is an email address that you have access to, as unlocked codes will be sent to this email address. We will talk more about that later. Then click on Apply. This XG firewall is now registered with the red provisioning service of Sophos. After the screen refreshes, you can see that you have two configuration options you can now set. Force TLS 1.2 is used to force the communication of the red device to use Transport Layer Security or TLS 1.2. If you want to use this feature, click the checkbox to enable and then apply. The second configuration option you have on the screen is Automatic Device Deauthorization. I recommend using this as it will automatically deauthorize a red device from connecting back to this firewall if it has been offline more than the amount of minutes you have defined. An example of why you want to use this feature is, let's say you have a red device at a remote location that was stolen. That stolen red device is now powered up and connected to an internet connection. Based on its provisioning, it would make a connection back into your network, giving the person on the other side of the red device access into your network. Not to say that would happen, but that would be an excellent example of why I would recommend the use of this feature. To enable this feature, click on the checkbox next to Enable you will see that the Deauthorize After setting now appears. The default setting is 60 minutes, and the range you can set here is from 5 minutes to 1,440 minutes. After adjusting the time to your liking, click Apply. I am now going to configure my red device in this XG firewall. In the Configure section of the left-hand navigation bar, click on Network. In the Interfaces tab, click on the Add Interface button and select Red. For branch name, enter the name of the remote office that this red device will be deployed at. Click on the drop down arrow to select the model of red device you are deploying. The red ID is a 15 character string on the label on the bottom of the red device. You can click on the drop down arrow for tunnel ID if you want to assign the tunnel ID, or if you leave it set to the default of automatic, the XG firewall will assign a tunnel ID consecutively starting from 1. The unlock code is an 8 character string that is generated when a red device is added to a Sophos XG firewall. The unlock code is generated during the deployment of a red device and is emailed instantly to the address you entered when you activated the red provisioning service. This is a security feature which ensures that a red device cannot simply be removed and installed elsewhere. If this red device has been deployed before, you must enter the unlock code here. Enter the host name of the Sophos XG firewall. The host name must be a publicly resolvable DNS name or IP address for the Sophos XG firewall. The red device will use this name or the IP address to connect back to the XG firewall. If you have a secondary firewall IP or DNS name, you can enter that in for the second firewall IP hostname field. This will allow for failover if the primary connection is not available or allow for low balancing between the two connections. Enter a description for the red interface in the description field. By default, the XG firewall provides the red's configuration data automatically via Sophos's red provisioning service. So the red device will receive its configuration via the internet. If the red device does not have an internet connection, you can provide the configuration manually via USB stick. For your uplink connection, Select DHCP if the red device will pull an IP address from your internet service provider, or if you have static IP information from your ISP, select static and enter the information here. You can also use a 3G UMTS connection for failover. To enable, click the checkbox and then fill in the newly added fields. 
Next is very important as I need to decide what type of tunnel will be created between the red device and the firewall. Standard Unified means all the remote office network traffic is routed through the firewall. The firewall will serve as a DHCP server and as a default gateway. The XG firewall will have complete control over the network traffic of the remote office. It can apply firewall rules to traffic between the local and remote LANs, as well as protect the traffic with all of the firewall protection services you have subscribed to on this firewall. In standard split mode, only traffic to select local networks is routed through the firewall. Select the local networks from the drop-down list in the split network box or create new networks which can be accessed by the red device. The XG firewall controls the traffic to these networks from the remote network. It also serves as a DHCP server and as the default gateway. All other remote traffic is sent directly through the local internet connection and would not have the protection of the firewall protection services you have subscribed to on the firewall. Transparent split mode, the firewall does not control the network traffic of the remote network, nor does it serve as a DHCP server, nor as the default gateway. The firewall will pull an IP address from the remote network DHCP server to become part of that network. You can select local networks that remote users have access to from the drop-down list in the split network box. It's important to note that only standard unified mode supports VLANs. Standard split and transparency split do not support VLANs. Also, if you use a 3G UMTS failover connection, you cannot use the transparent split mode. For this example, I'm going to use standard unified. Before I start filling the next fields, I want to decide what IP address to use for the red device and what DHCP scope to use for remote users. Since I'm using standard unified mode for this video, the firewall will be the DHCP server and default gateway. I'm going to use my DHCP range for the remote users of 192.168.1.1 through .20, and the IP address from red device will be 192.168.1.40. Now I'm going to enter the IP address of 192.168.1.40 for the red device. Decide which zone you want to place this red device on your network. I'm going to select the LAN zone. Next, I'm going to enter the DHCP range I mentioned earlier of 192.168.1 through 192.168.1.20. You can control the devices that will have access to use this red device by MAC address. In order to do this, you will need to create a MAC list in Host and Services in the System section of the left-hand navigation bar, then select the MAC Host tab from the options across the top, then click on Add. I did this earlier and I will show a screenshot here so I don't lose the settings we have entered so far. If I had not created a MAC host list earlier, all you would see here next to the MAC filter type would be the words, no configured MAC address list found, like you see in this screenshot. So with a MAC host list created, you see three options here. If I wanted to whitelist or blacklist a list of MAC addresses by clicking on one of the radio buttons, you can see a drop down is presented that I can click on to select from different MAC host lists that I had created. I'm going to select none as those examples that I created are full of dummy MAC addresses. Finally, the last option I have to configure is if I want to enable tunnel compression. Of course, I want my throughput to be as good as it can be, so I'm going to enable it. Then click Save. I'm not going to plug in my red device, and I'm going to show you the boot sequence of the device through a console connection. At the end here, you can see that the link is up and that the red device is in a forwarding state. I'm now going to go back to my firewall and navigate to my interfaces screen. I can scroll down to see my red interface, or I can click on red at the top just to see my red interfaces. And you can see that the link to my red device is up and it is seen on the remote simulated WAN IP address of 10.2.2.2. Now that my red device has been added and the tunnel link is up, I want to show you that unlock code I talked about earlier. As soon as this red device was activated, an unlock code was emailed, but you can also view that code from the firewall user interface. I'm going to click on REDS1 to edit this REDS device. You can see the unlock code here. Now remember, if I was to delete this red device from this firewall, and redeploy it somewhere else. In order to use this red device again, I would have to enter in this unlock code, so make sure you don't lose it. If you do, there's no way to unlock this red device without the assistance of Sophos technical support. 
The last thing we need to do is often overlooked, and that is creating the firewall access rules needed for users connecting over the red device to access resources on my local network. I'm going to click on Firewall in the Protect section of the left-hand navigation bar. You can see from the firewall rules that I currently have defined in my firewall that I do not have access rules from the red interface to the LAN or the WAN. I'm going to quickly jump over to a command prompt window. I want to show that I am pulling an IP address from a red device and that I do not have access to my local LAN or the WAN. I'm going to do an IP config so you can see I'm getting an IP address from my red DHCP. I'm pulling IP address 192.168.1.3. Now I'll try to ping my local network LAN by pinging IP address 172.16.16.16 and you can see the requests are timing out. I'm going to go back over to my firewall and I'm now going to create a firewall access rule for the red interface to the LAN and an access rule for the red interface to the WAN. I'm going to click on add firewall rule and select user slash network rule. I'm going to name this red to LAN and pick rule position to top. For source zone, I'm going to use LAN and for source networks, I'm going to use the red one interface. In destination zone, I'm going to select LAN. I'm going to uncheck match known users. I'm going to select to scan HTTP and FTP and then select general policy for intrusion prevention and allow all for both web policy and application control. I will check the checkbox for log traffic so any triggers to this rule will show up in the logs. And then finally click save. And for the red interface to WAN rule, I'm going to click on add firewall rule and select user slash network rule. I'm going to name this one red to WAN and pick rule position to top. For source zone, I'm going to use LAN and for source networks, I'm going to use the red one interface. In destination zone, I'm going to select WAN and I'm going to uncheck match known users. I'm going to select scan HTTP and FTP and then select general policy for intrusion prevention and allow all for both web policy and application control. And again, I'm going to select the checkbox so that any triggers to this rule will show up in the logs. Click save. And now you can see I have my two rules. I'm going back to the command prompt window. I will ping 172.16.16.16 again. And now you can see the replies from that IP. From our browser window, I'm going to launch Sophos's web page. Now you can see I have access to the WAN as well. Early in the video, I explained the feature of automatic device deauthorization in system services of the configuration section of the left hand navigation bar and the red tab across the top. That means that after a red device has been offline for a defined amount of time, the XG firewall will automatically deauthorize that device. This is a safety mechanism to ensure that if a red device is ever lost or stolen, that someone does not power it up with a live internet connection and then have that red device connect back to your network. I purposely powered off my red device for more than 60 minutes, which is my setting for deauthorize after. I'm now going to power on my red device and I'm going to show you the red interface and network on the left hand navigation bar and interfaces option across the top. Then I'm going to click on red to just see my red interfaces. You can see here that the interface is showing red is deauthorized. Click on the icon to the right that allows you to enable or disable the interface, edit or delete the interface. Simply toggle the slider button to enable the interface and then click OK to confirm. I'm going to quickly change screens to refresh this view. And now you can see that my red device is back up and online. Thank you for watching this video and I hope that you found it helpful.